Hey, what's up everyone? Today I'm here with eight-time world champion Dennis Vasiliev, and we wanted to discuss and give you a bunch of great tips and techniques that you can use to improve your single kettlebell long cycle, also known as your clean and jerk, but then also how you can learn some tips and tricks in terms of how you're gonna be able to transition more seamlessly and efficiently from one bell to two bells when you're performing the clean and jerk. So, Dennis, I got a question for you. Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> So when you're out there teaching, what would you say is kind of the most challenging point that you tend to see when someone's first learning the clean and jerk, and also more specifically the clean? Well, I can tell that uh, through the teaching is uh, insertion probably the most uh, challenging uh, challenging part. It, it took the most of the time. Uh, yeah. Can you demonstrate what you're talking about when you say hand insertion? Uh, yeah, because, well, we have uh, two types of uh, grip when we do the clean. And the first, uh, the grip for swing, and the second is the, the way how you hold the bell on the rack, and this transaction, it's a bit challenging for new people to, uh, to get it right away, so. Uh, the wrong instruction will be like that, when you basically hold the handle all the way through, when you hold it exactly the same for clean, uh, for the rack position as you hold it for swing, when you never let it go. And this way, you see it's, uh, the handle is a bit uh, too far away from the uh, wrist, and it's pulling you forward, and it's keeping it pumped, well, it causes all of these problems, that your grip starts to tire, you tear your hands. Uh, yeah, so this way, it, didn't, it will not work well. So she was almost a good one, hard for me to show her. <laughs> <laughs> and so the idea is uh, that they are not connected anyhow, the way how you hold the bell for swing, and the way how you hold it on the rack. Uh, and if we swing the bell, it means that you use uh, five fingers, you're holding the bell like that, you don't squeeze it too hard, uh, you use the like, advantage of uh, five fingers, but the top of the palm shouldn't, shouldn't be connected to handle, you shouldn't squeeze it, hand in there. And then, when you clean it, uh, it should be basically hanging on your thumb, like that, so you're not holding it with your head, your fingers will mm. yeah, So that's a uh, that's a big solution. Yeah, I notice a lot of times when 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 I see people performing the clean, they'll definitely do it like that, and then sometimes what you'll see is you'll see people kind of banging onto their form or holding on too firm. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of times this, this element of the hand insertion that Dennis is talking about is it really takes time and a lot and a lot of times I mean we always say the snatch is probably the most technical movement when you're performing kettlebell lifts but I would say I mean we've had this discussion you share with me the clean is essentially a snatch but to a lower destination. Yeah, that's actually a good uh, preparation for snatch mm -hmm. because it's a similar thing but you just have a shorter amplitude and it's slower so it's a bit easier to get insertion on clean. And you go figure out on clean, then you can probably give a try to snatch. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, well, as uh, as you showed, this uh, flipping of the belt too high, that's what can cause, you know, in the beginning, this discomfort in the forearms. Mm. Uh, and I just wanted to mention that uh, that's absolutely fine uh, for beginning to use the wristbands. Okay. Uh, so it just, it's not your weakness, you know, or something, it's it's fine, you know, because we just want to exercise to have a pleasure. You know, we don't want to hurt ourselves. So, and kettlebell sport actually don't mean pain. You know? <laughs> I, I always say is that if it's you know too painful, it means that something is wrong. Because ideally, it should be it should be alright. You know, it's not good when you uh, tearing your hands all the time. That's not a kettlebell sport. <laughs> it should be it should be safe. Uh, you shouldn't like have pain in your forearms. You know, it's, it just means that there is some issues and you, you need to work through. Uh, yeah, so uh, well, uh, eventually when you will get the perfect timing and rhythm of insertion, you will not need them. But on the beginning, you can use uh, just a regular, uh, a regular wrist bands or even with uh, uh, plastic parts inside that even you know hold uh, protect your forearm more freely. I think that's that's all fine. Yeah. Uh, so that that can be useful for be for for the beginning. Yeah, I think too like. When you're first starting out, the wristbands, as Dennis was saying, can be a really, can really help the, the transition because this is the one area that we're mentioning people tend to have the most trouble with, and it's gonna it's gonna take time for you to repetition for you to practice your technique, and so the wristbands can be helpful, but ultimately we don't want it to be a crutch. 
ultimately your technique should be so clean and so smooth that it doesn't bang into your forms. But like Dennis is saying, in the beginning they can be a nice way to kind of like make you <laughs> make you enjoy the, the learning curve a little bit more uh, with the quickness. Yeah, and uh, another interesting part uh, about is that uh, you will get the right insertion when you will be oh, how can say uh, brave enough, you know, and uh, feel the the bell better. You know, will not try to control it uh, con continuously. So you just should let it go for a moment and switch to insertion. Because what, what's happened in the beginning is that, well, mm, people kind of think that you know this can it's a weight and you need to just hold it firm, mm. uh, and they never relax, and that's why they just cannot get this insertion right. And the whole like, key for that that you should let it go for a moment. Uh, so basically, kind of in slow motion, what should happen is you throw the belt and let it go for a moment. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, you can turn around, but you can see that. You should let it go, and also, you should have let the belt leap like that. Because it will make it more difficult for you to uh, catch the belt, right? So you're kind of trying to keep it handle up all the time. And then, when you throw it, uh, and if you see slow motion or something, so you just slide your hand inside. Mm. It will, done, you cannot prepare for right distortion by uh, grip on the sweep. You know, some people they kind of try to uh, catch it get deep right away, but it's cause a pump in the forearm and tilt the head, and still, distortion didn't work. So, shouldn't worry about that and don't just keep it on the, or swing the way how it's comfortable. Here's all no tension in the wrist, only five fingers, arc straight. And then just throw it and let it go for a moment. It's like your hands. Well, another thing to say about this insertion is that you also shouldn't do too much work with your wrist. Mm -hmm. So ideally, you keep your palm and your forearm as the one piece. So it's from the front view, from the side view. It's not good when you kind of trying to you know, prepare for the insertion and kind of bend it this way or especially out because that's how the handle stuck halfway. So you basically keep it as the arrow. And that's how you want to get uh, right inside of the window. And actually another thing is uh, on your way you don't want to touch either handle or body. Mm. So you want to go right on the middle and the first thing that start touch the handle is your sound. And then when the sound is touched, uh, then it kind of pulls the rest of the palm inside. And that's how you get the right insertion. So when Dennis is lifting, he's using, like he was saying, that five-finger grip, which is essentially what we're using in kettlebell sport is a slightly different grip than you might use in Olympic weightlifting, but the name's the same. So in, in Olympic weightlifting, there's a hook grip used, but in Olympic weightlifting, the thumb wraps first, and then the fingers wrap around like this, and you would use a barbell. But with kettlebell, especially in kettlebell sport, like Dennis is saying, the relaxation of the arm is super, super important. So with this, we pretty much set the kettlebell handle into the root of the fingers. So you set your hand into the, the, the bell handle into the root of the fingers, then you wrap your fingers over, and then you cross your thumb. And so from this, it almost creates like a vice-like grip, and it opens up the palm, and then you're able to relaxate, relax the arm. So from here, when you're working, just like Dennis is saying, it makes it a lot easier to practice that release because you're not over gripping. So that hook grip is super important. If you use too much of a full grip, whether it's like this or like this, you're gonna, the bell's gonna be more likely to move around your arm as opposed to your arm moving into the bell. So that's just a key thing. That hook grip, I would say, is one of the more important things to not only improve grip endurance, but to also create that relaxation so you can move your hand through. Perfect. So. <laughs> and uh, so, that was one of the drills. Dennis, with that drill, that, that kind of release drill that you were showing, what would you suggest in terms of, let's say, a new lifter reps and sets, maybe just to, what would you recommend? Maybe, would they use that as a primary exercise or as like an additional exercise? How would you recommend maybe fitting that drill into someone's training? Uh, well, if we're talking about kettlebell sport training, then uh, I think uh, it can go as the warm-up sets. Okay. So as the warm-up, you can practicing just, you know, this, 
moment of losing the bell for a moment for a second and try to work on insertion, and then you still should give a try for uh, uh, some cleans and a long cycle. Okay. Uh, even if it will not be perfect, that's still fine. That's why we all drink, you know. Uh, so just give a try, and then as the cool down as well after the sets of the complete exercise, you also can do a couple sets of multiple switching. Uh, because even uh, when you do like one arm clean, so one arm long cycle, uh, you still uh, will switch sides only once per set. So you kind of will try to you know, keep like one or two minutes per side. Uh, kind of will try to follow the uh, rules of the sport. But when you will practice even insertion, uh, you can do multiple switch and you can switch every, well, probably not every rep, but maybe two or three reps. Okay, and are you using, when you're practicing that drill, are you using, let's say, the same weight that you would use as your main training set? Or would you, you, you suggest, like, would you want to use a lighter weight, or how would you go about that? Uh, well, it's always nice to go as light as it's, as it's possible. Well, like I say, you should stay in your comfort zone. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, again, I just recommend to, especially everyone who's uh, watching us and uh, who's thinking to start technical sport, just don't take it personal, you know, when you're just, you know, thinking, okay, I, I, I'm in a good shape, I probably should go with respect to the weight of the ground. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not like that, it's, you know, like, especially people who do kettlebell sport, they will get it 100%. You know, you will not, you know, no one will, you know, uh, you know like, things that, you know, you're out of shape or something, and not, not embarrassing thing to go over in life. So you shouldn't feel struggle under the weight, and, well, for guys that's, you know, 16, that's okay way to start, but it's also fine to start with 12. For girls, that's eight, but it's fine to start with even lighter weights, so actually, like the same color, but this one's only just uh, uh, four kilograms. <laughs> you know, it's way uh, nothing, you know, but it's the same competition shape. Well, and you, like, same size of the window, so without any, you know, uh, damage and any challenge, you can practice it with the sensation, just have fun catch the rhythm, and then go for heavy weights. Yeah, I would, I would totally agree. And I, and I think too, like what, he, what Dennis said is spot on because I see the same thing when I'm out there coaching. Like obviously, we all want to lift heavy weights to get stronger, but it's always the more, typically it's always the more technical lifter that has the more potential to go further. Once you can match the, the technical aspect of your lifting with your natural or your raw strength or what you grow into, then you can really, your numbers will hugely improve. And I, and I really do feel whether it's, it doesn't even necessarily need to be kettlebell sport, whether it's CrossFit, Jiu Jitsu, however you're gonna be utilizing the kettlebell to become more efficiently efficient. And essentially with this kind of style of lifting that we're showing, it's tremendous for building volume. Like if you really wanna be as efficient as possible, energetic and movement wise, then what we're teaching here can really, really help. So. Starting off light absolutely has its place. Build your reps, build your numbers, and then I guarantee you, you'll be able to transition that to heavier loads as you, as you move later, later down the road. But Dennis, one of the questions that, so single kettlebell lifting is super popular today, right? A lot, a lot of organizations, if you're doing a certification, a lot of level ones will teach single bells, or a lot of times, for example, in CrossFit, they'll use single bells. One of the questions that I usually get is, people have a, diff have a difficult time transitioning from one bell to two bells when they're doing the clean and jerk. Can you discuss a little bit about your advice of, that you would give someone when they're moving from one bell, long cycle to two bells? Yeah, sure. Uh, of course, two bells, two, two arm, uh, two kettlebell lift, uh, two double, double long cycle or double cleans are more challenging, mostly, well, even not as much as uh, weight-wise, but uh, flexibility-wise. Uh, uh, with one bell, uh, well, I think it's a good start uh, because it's a bit less challenging. Uh, well, Flexibility-wise, it's easier to reach the belt or pelvis and rest your elbow because, well, that's how you uh, should lift that well. Uh, it's easier to breathe uh, because with two bells, it's also another problem. When you get this rep, you realize that your chest is just so like locked out and it's also like a special way to breathe with two bells. Not like a normal people do, you know. Like with two belts, you use your back to make intake, not your chest, mm -hmm. and it also takes a bit time to adjust to it. So it's, yeah. Uh, I think that's a, that's a quite uh, uh, difficult, especially if the if the weights are serious to go on the double belts right away. 
So that's why you, know, you can start with one bell. And then with two bells, again, what you want to uh, get first is your right position. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the key for you know, your successful you know, uh, participation with double bells. Uh, because if you will be able to reach your pelvis with two bells, what it gives to you is a relaxation of your uh, upper body, your shoulders, so you will not have uh, problems with just standing and holding the bells for time, because that's how the ball sets more. It's not even just reps, or well, reps kind of ball after all. First of all, you want to hit the time, you want to get your one minutes, or two minutes, or three, or five, or ten, and uh, that's your, what I call, that's your whole right position. Mm -hmm. If you have your elbows stable on the right, that's it. You, you will manage through the time. Um, then, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, first of all, relaxation of the shoulder. Then uh, if, you, if you relax your shoulders, you will be able to breathe. So basically, the right position, that's, that's the most fundamental thing that needs to, needs to have for the double bells. Mm -hmm. And uh, to, to prepare for that, you start with doubles and at least First, you're trying to reach your one elbow, and you start working on flexibility of your shoulder. So, because basically, that's of course that's a body proportions, and uh, someone have uh, you know unlike unlike your proportions for kettlebell sport when your pelvis is narrow and uh, trunk is tall, uh, it might be challenging to reach your pelvis. But that's why we're using kettlebell sport because it helps you to kind of smooth your personal body proportions. Raising this up a little yeah, higher. Yeah, raising a bit up, make it a bit wider by, by the thickness of the belt. Because again, someone blessed be a capable lifter, you know, with a wider pelvis and shorter trunk. <laughs> you know, this is not necessarily a magazine and a <laughs> body type. Well, I, I don't mean that capable lifters have a weird uh, uh, body. So it's actually it's a cool thing about capable sport that it's you can make it work for any body type and you can see in, you know, different anatomist benefits. Uh, I think that's the you know what makes you uh, actually a good, good lifter if you can see on your body and, you know see your differences as the benefit among others, not the weak spots. Because if it's a long arms, you know okay that's a wider amplitude, but it's a faster uh, momentum mm -hmm. as well. So you know that's uh, on one hand that's uh, what makes lifting more difficult. On the other hand, it's going to be your benefit. Would you find, can you demonstrate one bell clean and then just show two bells clean mm -hmm. from maybe this angle? So that they can see. Well, one bell. Okay. Yeah. 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 So we will connect that idea with your legs straight. Uh, a good check for right insertion, what we were talking about before. Fingers relax. The relaxation of the arm, yeah. shouldn't be much tension. Breathing continuously, I will hold my breath. And that was what I was talking about when the elbow is here, you basically, the weight is above your wrist, it's going to your elbow and to your legs, and you don't actually carry any weight on your chest. Mm -hmm. It's kind of tricky because it seems like the bell is on my shoulder, but it's just a touching for balance. Mm -hmm. I'm not actually carrying the weight of the bell. Right. And it's actually a mistake when you're standing like that, when you lean back. First, it's uh, you know unnecessary load to your low back, and second, it's just blocking your breathing. So you want to shift balance forward, and you want to direct it to your pelvis. Can you stay right there? Mm -hmm. I think this is a great point because, like Dennis was saying, like a lot of times when you see people first getting into kettlebell sport, especially when they're moving into double bells, as Dennis was saying, they don't have the requisite flexibility and mobility to get in that position comfortably and safely. But if you, a lot of times what I'll have is people work single bell, and then on their homework on the outside, they'll work the flexibility needed to get into double bells. But essentially what Dennis is saying is, there's just a straight line of force of one joint stacked over the other. So if I were to push straight down, this is, his elbow is just resting on his iliac crest right on that belt. So it's nothing, it's not pulling him back, putting him in a bad position. So there's definitely a flexibility requirement Are you there. Right? Uh, we can do the exact same thing. Let's see, I'll, I'll shift a little bit, then I'm sure guys can see the space. And you can do the same thing if you go, you know, just press a little bit. Yeah. Uh, that's possible to balance. I mean, of course, that's uh, a bit more challenging to balance when it's no connection at all. Mm. So that's why, you know, I'm glad the bell touch it. Okay. Uh, but again, just the main uh, way is located right above the wrist. It's not. Right.
And can you show maybe like five or so reps, five to ten reps with dumbbells? So one last thing when it comes to dumbbell lifting, as Dennis was saying, the nice thing about today, which wasn't really true years ago, is that you know companies like let's say Kettlebell Kings make super light belts, like four kilo, six kilo. So now we have the ability to train in two kilo increments, all the way down from four kilos. So it's one thing you could either start single bell, work your flexibility, kind of practice that technique of the release with single bell and or on the side, you can, you can potentially start training double bells, but just starting light, focusing on technique. And again, these are the same color, but as you can see, these are just four kilo and super light, but all the techniques should just remain the same. So that's one of the really nice things about kettlebell sport and then a lot of the bells that they have. No matter what weight it is, the bell size, the handle, the handle diameter, the bell size, the window size, all remains the same. Um, yeah, that's an amazing thing that happened uh, just last year because it was uh, quite challenging for manufacturers to make a competition size bells or light. Mm. Uh, they can, you know, materials like with cast iron, you cannot do uh, the body so thin, mm. it's too fragile. So they finally, you know, find a way to, you know, it's, I think, aluminium. Yeah, that's now it's a competition standard. Before, even 16 kilogram bells was a, had a smaller body. Mm. Uh, but now, even, you know, six. Well, that's four kilogram belt still can, can have a competition shape, so I think it's a, it's a brilliant thing. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I'm just curious, so for, for the listeners, if they don't know, you know, kind of you, who you are and your background, what was the best number that you achieved in long cycle? So, clean and jerk. Uh, 101 reps. So, 101 reps, unbroken in 10 minutes, with double 32 kettlebells. Yeah, I'm most, most proud of, of this number. It's actually the third best result ever shown in the kettlebell sport history. Wow. Yeah, it's only two people did uh, uh, more, more than 100 reps, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm the skinniest guy in this company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just 185 pounds. Yeah, that was a uh, kind of dream of the whole career. Yeah, handle the space 10. 